second largest continent in the world and the richest. Half of Africa has not even been developed yet. Hey, you you see, just play a game. You want to play a game. I don't right. like how I'm treated, but I don't want to get away from the man who mistreated me. So then people say, well, Africa got the white man over there. And you're right. The white man still dominates economically, but the, the question is why? Because Africa is still dependent because they have no other source of finance. But guess what? When we get over there, when we get over there, with our money that we bring from America, right. guess what now? With our engineers and our doctors. Exactly. Guess what now? Africa ain't got to look to the white man too much no more. Because we got brothers and sisters who can do it now. Who learned under the white man and now can take it and replicate those systems on the continent. The white man is there politically, economically, but numerically, we run that shit. Africa is the land of the blacks, hands down. Yeah, the Chinese coming in trying to buy it all up. The Arabs coming in trying to buy it all up. And they will if we don't step in and take our position. You cannot let another race dominate the most minerally rich continent on earth. We will never rise if we let that shit happen. The new Cold War is China versus America for who's going to control the resources in Africa. That's the current Cold War taking place right now. We cannot let that happen. We will be destroyed. Right. How did you get it? Good brother David Inhotep wrote a book that Africans were the first Americans. Everybody need to read that. He talks about how the Africans came over here from Africa. So, yeah, you're right. We were here first, but we knew where we came from. Why are you, why are you, why are you so hell-bent on disidentifying with the cradle of civilization? Why is that so important to so many black folks? Because you're filled with self-hatred. There's all it is. You got to see it for what it is and keep it moving. And that's why I can't wait to open up the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey School and save our children from all these anti-African, I don't want to be black ideology that's running around. Intellectual masturbation sounding like it's good. It ain't nothing but bullshit. I know where you come from. You don't want to admit it, but go to Africa with me. I'll show you 20 people look just like your ass. Your mother, your father, I'll show you exactly where you came from. Uh, I ain't from Africa. Get the hell out of my face with that bullshit. <laughs> All right, family, if you're listening, this is the time. Uh, Dr. Umar is the man of the people. He said he want to talk to the people. He want to build uh, with the people. So if you don't get him now, you might not get him unless you see him live. That phone number to call in is 713-955-0707. Again, that's 713-955-0707. And press 1 uh, with your question or your comment. I'm going to go down to area code 414 414- 364-414-364. Tell us your name, where you call it from, and whether you got a question or a comment. Yeah, my name is Jesse. I'm calling from Walking, Wisconsin. I got basically a comment about the, the number of uh, what well, he was saying is more white people in this country than there are black people. And I'm 47. From the time I was little to right now, I see more black people. Then you throw in the fighting during the Civil War, a lot of white people Paris than that. So I'm figuring how them numbers get like that. <laughs> 300 what million from the numbers from 1865? And I always know they always use um, it's like a, it's basically trickery. If I could uh, fool you to think there's that many people in this country, you're going to never want to go up against them. You're going to always think it's going to be a slaughter. And I don't know. I want to know where you get these numbers from. Who giving these numbers? Because I've been seeing more blacks from my, in my lifetime than white people. And they're good at scare um, tactics. And I think that's one of them. Okay. Uh, my response to that is, uh, well, firstly, it's not a scare tactic. Uh, secondly, I travel the country more than any other scholar alive, and I don't see more black people than white people. Um, I know for a fact that they've been holding our numbers quite steady for a while uh, with mass incarceration, birth control, homosexuality, abortion, so forth and so on. Um, And although the numbers might be uh, underestimated to some extent, I will concede that. Uh, I will concede that I believe that we may be more than the 12 to 18 percent that is generally reported by the census. I believe we may be upwards of 30 percent. But I would find it hard to believe that we were more than 40%. I would find that hard to believe. But here's the issue. 
from a military standpoint, black people trying to wage war against the United States government without any foreign allies is a ridiculous undertaking. You cannot win a war without a supply of food. You cannot win a war without a supply of weapons. And you cannot win a war without some sort of independent communication source. Whenever an army goes to war, they develop a source of communication that cannot be infiltrated. Special phones, special Internet, we own none of that technological sophistication that is necessary. We know how to build it. We have those who can build it. But to be able to protect yourself and your deception is going to be quite a difficult undertaking. I'm not saying it's impossible. But I think that it is not in our best interest to go to war without guaranteeing a steady supply of weapons. You don't manufacture anything. There has never been a people that has ever won a war in world history, and you can do your research on this. There's never been a people who has ever won a war in world history who did not produce the materials necessary for war or did not have a relationship with the country who could distribute it to them. We don't produce it, and we don't have a relationship with a country. So once you start fighting, where are you going to get your bullets, your guns at? Where are your bombs coming from? Where are your cell phone communication lines coming from? You don't have that yet. So once we build all that and you say you want to go to war, then be my guest. But, again, I look at the world from an international perspective. I don't have a domesticated Negro perception. So I'm not just looking to fight America. This is not my fight ground. It is not. I know where I come from, and I know that whoever owns that continent runs this world. The white man is king because he's king of Africa's resources. The Chinese are about to be king because they're soon to be king of Africa's resources. If we want to be king of resources as well, yes, we need an army. But there could be no army without infrastructure. There can be no army without infrastructure. How the hell are you going to go to war when you don't have a land mass that you control? Land is the basis of revolution, and it is the first thing to be fought for in war. So I just think often when we start talking about fighting the oppressor, we need to be a little bit more mature in our approach to that subject. Because we're fighting before we're organized. We're fighting without an infrastructure. We're fighting without a, a supply of weapons, food. How are our women and children going to be protected? All I'm saying is let's think through these questions a lot more thoroughly before we start telling our young people, because I'm concerned that too many of us so-called warrior Africans are misleading our young people into thinking that they should just go get a gun. And that's not how wars are won. That's not how wars are won. The first thing you do when you fight a war is you cut off the enemy's ability to resupply himself. Have we dealt with the logistics of war? Sun Tzu talks about that, the logistics. What is our logistical plan for food, clothing, shelter, and defense of our women and children? Until you can show me a logistical plan, stop talking to me about armed war with white folks while you're living in their country. What people has ever won a war with another people fighting on the land that they control? Vietnam beat America because they threw America into Vietnam. They fought on their own territory. The African revolutions were won That's because right. they fought them on their own territory. That's and right. they was able to beat Russia because they fought on their own territory. This ain't your territory. Right. I just think we got to be a little bit more mature when we start talking about issues of warfare. But much respect to the brothers. 